One extra million come out. All right, let's go to 638 issue. Any questions? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We had no scheduled speaks tonight. Um, we just got a set of mini minutes and I believe contained therein with some non public minutes. Um, there were a few changes that went through and they're all look like they were all addressed. I move we accept the selections meeting September twenty eighth, uh, a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Passes. And we already voted on the non-public legal seal indefinitely, right? We got both sets of meetings. Did he do both or just one? We did September 28th, right? Yes. Okay. Right. One. Well, that was 22. Well, yeah, but these are not public, right? Yeah. Do we approve this? Are they all part of the one set of meeting minutes? Okay. In the, in the past, we did too. Go ahead, let it go. You, if they're approved, they're approved. Okay. okay. Any public input? Seeing none, um, <clears throat> I'm going to pitch it from Mary Lou to Heritage. First year. Um, the average met last week, um, and um, of note, we received a generous donation from Mr. Vasek. Uh, I can't his name. say his name wrong. Bob Sarvasic. and his his wife. Um, we look at Kim. Karen. Karen. I, I think it is not right. <laughs> Karen and Bob Sarvasic. Thank you. Talk to him every week. Um, we were looking to get a display case that kind of display antiques or anything related to the history of the town. Um, these cases are not cheap, and Bob had a nice one, uh, just kind of a quick photo of it. It's, it's going to stand here, as long as it's like okay with this. It's going to stand here, it's going to be a wooden display case like this. You're going to try to rotate antiques at least twice a year, if not four times a year. With a little placard saying what, what the item is. Um, it also is lit from the inside. <clears throat> so that is free. That's a donation that the Heritage Commission agreed to accept. Um, the one thing is it does plug in. We don't have a plug on that wall. Um, we did get a quote from Dame Electric that he could install an outlet there for us for $500 um, or less. I hope it's less. It seems a little. Um, and the heritage would have sufficient funds to cover that. We'll look to see if we would split it with the town. Um, all right, this is just a quick letter from Mary Lou. Um, I had a phone conversation today with the person I was scheduled to repair the windows at the townhouse. He will not get the job done this year, but will be back next year to do it. He will coordinate with Craig about getting access to the one window that is open and closed for the winter. The Heritage Commission has been trying to think of ways uh, that some artifacts could be shared with the visitors that come to the town and may have to wait until they are served. Bob and Karen Servasic have offered to donate a lock and curio cabinet that would work well. The thought is it could be placed in the blank wall in between the common office and the kitchen. Area. Brian is a part of the cabinet, I showed it to you, and that's the wall, wall that she's referencing. Uh, we have one small problem, the cabinet has a light inside, but location there's no outlet available. I contacted Aaron Dame, asked him to quote, to install an outlet in this location. His quote would be around $500 for the outlet. Heritage Commission still has over $1,500 left in the annual budget. <clears throat> and I'd like to recommend that the segment approve hiring Aaron Dame to put this outlet in. That's from Aaron Dill. Can, I, can, can we? Can I ask some questions? Please do. Talk about the window again. What did that first paragraph of the window say? Um, that he's not going to get to the job at all this year, but he's going to try to get back here and I'm going to uh, to close the window. It sounds like Craig may have some information on that. Yeah. 
Uh, just that he's, I'm the contact person to open the place for him so he can do that left window that we've had trouble closing. I think it has to do with the little uh, Victorian period latch. Uh, but he'll figure out what has to be done and uh, we'll do it before they leave for Florida in two weeks. Thank you. That was so I'm nice. expecting that I'll hear from him in the next day or two. Uh, I just saw his wife an hour ago. Thank you, sir. Kevin. Before we put the money into putting an electric outlet in, yeah. why don't we put the cabinet there and see how well we use it? The cabinet should be here within this week with okay. this light and rubs so he can pretty much move it on his own. We're going to place it there. Yeah. They already have artifacts spoken for that are going to be going in yeah. in short order. Um, but, but to use it, we don't need power. It will, it will you, work. You would I need that without the power, it would just be a blank cabinet without any power clip. I'll donate the money for an extension cord. <laughs> Seriously, an extension cord, uh, a good quality, heavy duty extension cord from either in there or in there. Five hundred dollars is ridiculous. For I, I think it's a little high myself. I'm, I'm, no, I'm not an electrician, and Aaron Damon's always treated us very well. I just uh, there's power in the wall. I, I, again, I'm not an electrician, but there's power in the wall, so. Yeah. Can you tap into that? My concern is that we're going to start initially with some artifacts or whatever, some nice displays. But it's going to die, in my opinion. We will not stay on top of it, and we'll have an outlet and a cabinet that we're not maintaining, and then we're going to say, what are we going to do with this cabinet? Now, after six months of using it and keeping it well-stocked and documented, maybe at that time we spend $500 or whatever, or even an extension board at that point, to see if we're going to use it. But it seems like we're jumping to spend the 500 and it may not live that long. That's my comment. Um, I agree with Rich. Uh, get the cabinet in, let's use it, see how it goes. We, with an extension cord. We can, we, can, we can blow the money on the extension cord right away. Right. You, you can. And uh, it'll be lit and we'll get used to it lit. And if, if, if it's a hit, we'll go for an outlet. So we decide we need to play. Yeah. If it lives. Yeah. I'm fine. It just the heritage has their own money, so they will spend it. It's not time money, it's heritage. So I'm just throwing that out there. It sounds like five hundred dollars could be used somewhere great, but I that's one of five hundred dollars that's you know, it seems really high to me. Let's, let's discuss something at the next meeting. All right, so we'll get the cabinet in, hopefully in short order. Yeah. Um, we can do the extension cord routine, or it's not. We can just leave it dark and sure the light's right above it. And um, if we want, we'll tackle the outlet next year. We can, yeah. All right, so we don't need a motion to put that in there. Anything like that. You guys are okay with that? Yeah, you should, should make a motion to accept the gift. It's a gift. Okay, the Heritage already accepted the gift on behalf of the Heritage. Select me to accept the gifts. Okay. All right, so then I'll, I'll make the motion on behalf of the Heritage that we accept the gift of this carrier cabinet for display purposes right over here in the town hall offices. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And we're going to table the outlet until... See how it looks. See if it lives. Right on. Okay. And right, that's it for Mary Lou. Um, Do we stand on paint? They are... They... Are planning on meeting with Craig and I think Karen and I'm not sure if anyone else is going to be in on the committee to pick the color. I know the one issue was, well, the couple issues we have a, a swatch pattern we can use that this kind of paint from a specific vendor, right? That is, gives us the okay, but also we need to look at the stenciling so that it properly contrasts with, with the background paint. And I'm crazy and we're inside of you. I haven't heard a thing. I didn't I didn't know they were gonna to talk to me. I felt left out. I don't think they would dare. <laughs> they would dare that so um, no, it was it was really those exact words that we had to get together with Craig on this day. So she's um, unavailable she's for a little bit. 
Yeah. And uh, so when she's available again, I'm sure we'll try to get the painting. I'm going to get Brenda Watts. He was a co to do the painting over there. She's done all the other painting around here and has done great work. So, but not the stencil that she's going to. No, she's just purely the, the background color. Yeah, right. There's a special stencil. That's the easy part. Yeah, the stencil is a whole different ball of wax. That's going to cost some money. <laughs> well, as long as we get well, the color up, then it's going to look great. You know, it, 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 it's it's budget time. We should really have a quote on the stencil. I think we're a pretty good grasp on that. The stencil's been made. Oh, yeah. they, and they know the pen, yeah, it's all done. But it's the labor of putting it up. I ain't gonna argue that, but she sounds like she has a pretty good handle we'll on that. We'll find it out. Okay, we'll talk. Okay. Um, let's, let's do treasure now. I'm jumping around a little bit here. Do you want me to present the bills? Or yeah, we do. Um, I don't have anything. Okay, that's typically, our community really usually has like a good typical where we're at and whatnot. Um, okay, and so right now we have bills you read on the record. We got some payroll checks we're going to sign. Um, you know, big money been moving around, but I saw the couple of bank statements. So, okay, so at the end we'll ask you to read the bills. Okay. Okay. Great. You know, you get a cemetery trustee and um, archives. Archives. Thank okay, you. cemetery trustees. We have the cemetery trustees are meeting. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Tomorrow morning at ten o'clock, we're going to be picking the um, um, monument uh, that's going to go in front of the flagpole with the dedication and the listing of the remaining uh, service branches that don't are not represented in the five uh, monuments that were put in a year ago. Um, Ed and his son moved, I guess, pretty much all of the loan. I've got to get from you a rough idea of cubic yardage. Okay. Uh, I figure you know how many truckloads went in uh, what your truck holds, so we should be able to get someplace around there. So we can figure for the spring, this is for the acre and a half that has nothing to do with the uh, Section A and Section B uh, that we're going to invest some more money, uh, but with some real soil and manure or fertilizer, composted fertilizer, to uh, uh, try once again to get the field going so that it grows better than just weeds. Um, hopefully the climate will cooperate with us in terms of rain. Um, so anyways, we have a meeting tomorrow. Uh, for those of you that want to attend. Um, there was something else. Oh, the benches got moved thanks to Rich Zachary he arranged that. He also arranged the soil, the loam being moved. Um, Corey did the benches, I think, last Friday, Thursday or Friday. And uh, so there's two at the memorial area and uh, one at the end of each section, section A and section B. In the spring, there'll be maples planted, so it'll be a mirror image for what already exists on the driveway end will also be at the other end. Um, I think that's it for the cemetery. Um, I have a question about for the Helen Churchill Memorial plaque. We got a price to do a new plaque and have it installed properly on the stone that's been ins installed in the garden that Rick did this summer. Um, it was right around now uh, that it's reflected in the minutes two years ago. My recall was, and I checked this with Lori, 
that we had two years to put in a claim. Three, I believe. Well, that's, that's what Lori said, and Lori said that's what you as an insurance guy said, that it would be three years for a claim. But we need, before I, it's going to be $1,200 for the plaque to be redone, because the one that was on the rock got bent. Uh, to have it re a, a new one done and then to have it installed on the rock come the spring. But we would order it and pay for it now, so pay for everything up front. Yeah. Um, I need probably Cassie to call the insurance company. We, we need a firm commitment that we have time to submit the bill which would be in the next month. I don't want to order this thing and then find out we're a month late and miss the opportunity. You follow me? So, flip slide it, X-Ray is, if they're not going to pay for it, we're not going to do it. I don't think we're going to, no. Okay. We'll either go without or we'll, we'll figure out a way to use the old one. Put it up with duct tape, but it, right, we're we're uh, there's no money available, uh, particularly at twelve hundred dollars to to replace it, other than with an insurance claim. It was I'm really confident it was three years. You might have to talk to the, the police department to pull the accident report to get the insurance company. Did, yeah. get, did we ever get? We must get like a claims notice from the insurance company. I thought we did. So we, you want to just check the file? Um, I know the minutes were October two years ago because I asked Lori to find it. She did a, a word search through all of the minutes. I think she put in insurance claim or either that or. Uh, uh, accident report. Uh, I want to say she has a copy, or you guys have a copy of the accident report in the files. Yeah, we do. But I'm not positive of that. Um, but we, we, we definitely, I'll feel a lot more comfortable that we verify that we still have time to put the claim in and that we haven't run out of time. See what I can dig up for some information tomorrow. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So the accident must have been like September or less of two years ago, August or September. Because I remember coming to the meeting and suggesting that we put a claim in uh, because the rock had been smashed in the uh, and the plaque, we didn't even know where the plaque was for a while. And then, uh, someplace I found Yeah, it's it. definitely three years. I just, I was making sure I, I have so many states in it, but we have, we have, you have, you have three years to file a, a claim in the courts. Yeah. So that's usually what would, you know, as long as we were below the statute of limitations. Yeah. You know, or if they were to waive it for us. So we're still well within the three years, so they have to honor the claim. Okay. Three years from the accident? From the date of the accident. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we, we need to find out the exact date and the insurance company. Yeah, but it's been well under three, I want to say, yeah, it's in that. Yeah, it's, it's around just two. over two. Yeah, that sounds yeah. about right, so yeah. you should be able to get that in. They should be able to honor that claim without any, any trouble. Great. And then uh, on the archives, I wanted to let you know that I picked up the, um, the book that was paid for partially by the Moose Plate Grant which was book number, record, record book number eight. Uh, I picked that up two weeks ago, along with the digital images, uh, which this time are on a thumb drive. Um, they had billed us for a hard drive, so they, I got them to give us a credit towards the next book. Uh, I delivered, Book four 
which was voted to be done at town meeting. So obviously we're way behind. Um, what happened with book eight getting done was they got a little behind because of the pandemic. They were shut down for quite a while. Uh, but then they got really behind trying to find some place to do microfilm. And even though it's the state of the art, very few people are doing it anymore. They no longer have a vendor. So I'm going to talk to the state library. Uh, they're the ones who, re for the grants, require the uh, microfilm. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to tell, I mean, we have microfilm to give them for this grant, but uh, I mean, it's not my place to tell them that they're not going to get it anymore from anybody, but uh, that it's harder and harder to find it, and it's going to get more and more expensive. So what I've asked them on book four, which is 1845, to 1862. That's the one that they're they're going to give us a uh, a proposed uh, plan for conservation of it and just digital images. And then, if we really insist on finding microfilm, which we really don't need, we don't have a microfilm reader. Uh, they will give us some names of where we can take our digital images and have them put on the microfilm. But I think the days of doing microfilm are over for us. Um, so the book is back. Uh, I haven't even opened it up. It's all packaged up. I haven't even opened it and looked at it. Um, for the next meeting, I'll do that and bring it out to show it to you. And by the first week of November, we should get a quote from NEDCC as to what it would cost. As I think I told you, the book doesn't need to be recovered. There's no real damage to it. It'll be, they would clean it. It definitely needs cleaning. There's one page that needs a repair. Uh, and then they'll digitize it. So it should be... I'm expecting it to be roughly seventy-five to eighty-five hundred dollars, uh, which we, I think we budgeted ten thousand. And what you probably need to think about, since it's in this budget year, is when we get the contract. Usually, we pay one third up front, and then two thirds when the book is done. You might want to think about paying the whole thing within this year. So they'll start the work on it, but it won't be completed by December 31st. But that way it will be paid for in this budget you year. Right, the budget money. So. Yeah, you either that or encumber the funds, because we'll know exactly what the bill is going to be. Right, right. Uh, but that's up to you guys to decide. Yeah, we get to check out the dog first, we get to check out the dog, but. Yeah. And then the other thing, I haven't talked with Kristen about it, and I feel like I should since she's the assistant archivist and will eventually be the archivist, um, about going to digital minutes, digitalization of minutes as a way of starting to do some digitalization and then also we'll have this from Stratford County Regional Planning. Uh, I've been thinking about different things we might do uh, when they um, have their project on the road. Uh, they'll be available to do large format stuff. So I'm thinking primarily with them things that we might want done large format, digitalized. When you say digital, what, what do you mean? What does that mean to you? Uh, it would be, everything would be, talking about the minutes, everything will be PDFs. Sorry? P everything will be done in a PDF. Scan it and make it a PDF. 
Uh, however, it, when it comes to us, and this has all got to be worked out, does it come to Cassie or does it come to the archivist and I keep track of everything that we've gotten or not gotten? And then it goes on to the server and it goes on to an external hard drive as a PDF. <coughs> And there'll be no paper copy. Since that's what everybody's screaming about. Let's do digital. Get rid of paper. I figure it's a way we can start and see. I still, I want to talk to the state archivist. I, I, I had this discussion at NEDCC when I was down there. And... Um, there are still, believe it or not, no real uniform directions and standards for what constitutes a digitalized record that is archival, meaning it will be kept for life and it will be available for life. Um, so you've got cities and towns doing all kinds of digital records. Well, I asked, what does it mean? Right. And the last time I talked to the state archivist at a workshop three years ago, the legislature had just passed the uh, bill authorizing digital records with absolutely no direction as to how it's supposed to be done. It just says, basically, digital records are a good thing, we should do them. Now, we wouldn't expect the legislature, would we, to give that kind of direction, but nobody else has either. Um, maybe in the three years since I talked to Brian, the state archivist, things have changed. But I would like to see us, I figure minutes are a good place to start, you know. Uh, but there, there's a whole methodology and process that needs to be worked out. But I figured I would mention it to you, see if there was any reaction. I can see Eddie's very excited about it. <laughs> uh, but what you guys think, I mean, you might say, keep it paper. I mean, we're talking about well, yes, like, like we're that talking much a ream of paper. Because we're talking on a PDF here in 2021. In, in 2121, someone might go, what, what does PDF mean? Right. Does software exist? Is there even any capabilities of, you know, reading. downloading it and reading it? You know, everything sounds ducky now, but, yeah. you know, software gets outdated pretty quickly and, yeah. you know, becomes antiquated. Next thing you know, you don't even have the ability, to, you know, like, imagine having stuff stored on a five-inch floppy disk right now. Right. You, you, wouldn't know how, you wouldn't know how to even get it off there. Right. You know? So. Yeah. Right, and then, believe it or not, there's something known as a PDF-A and a PDF-B. Don't ask me what that means. But I figured it's a place to start. Yeah, I just have uh, some information. The county years ago, because they were trying to get all of their paperwork straightened out, went to a company called DocStar, D-O-C Star. I'm certain if you contact them, because they have their contact information, he can come and answer all those questions. Yeah. Because eventually the county is going to most likely go to a, a fully digital uh, searchable system, but they, of course they'll keep it all archived, the originals, but everything else will be digital so you yeah. could control your 91As and everything else. And I would think of the amount of paperwork that's in this room, I don't think it would be that expensive. I think the quote that the county got four years ago was around 30000 mm -hmm. but there's a lot of, there's a lot of paperwork. Yeah. So if you got him to come in and just ask him a few questions about the different PDFs and how that happens, then at least you get that True. information. Yeah, and I, there's, just, I'm sorry. I just wanted to add on also, the date of that meeting about the accident and the insurance is um, October 8th, 2019. And it's all on the website. And every, everything you said in that meeting is recorded. So, so I'll get you that information about Doc so I just want to. Sure. Yeah, I've gotten a couple of flyers from 
company. I mean, obviously, their digitalization is the big thing, so there's lots of companies that are moving in that direction that have all the knowledge behind it. And there's companies that are specializing in records management for cities and towns. Right. So I'll I'll explore that, and uh, you know maybe set up a consultation with somebody, and see. I mean I would like to see us do it. Uh, I mean at this point there's you know in terms of person power I don't think we need to hire a firm to do our minutes. Um, but we'll see what comes of it, and I'll keep you informed. Let me jump in. Tomorrow night, we're meeting with the printer right. vendor. I'll be there. And we're going to <coughs> entertain questions like you just raised. How, right. how would we scan a lot of documents to make a PDF? And, and I know other departments are going to be there with their issues for that printer. Right. So getting a new one. So that's 6 o'clock tomorrow night. Yep. I'll be there. Here. Here. Yeah. Here, here. All right. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you, Craig. Thank you. Uh, Planning board, you guys uh, met this week, right? Yeah, we met last night. We had two hearings, one for Eversource, uh, trimming the trees on the scenic roads. Second was a minor subdivision. The planning board covered um, conditional use, Rec 1. They took a swag in the... Um, New way of permitting permitted uses. Personal wireless service facility, they got some feedback back from the attorney on uh, rewriting a wireless, uh, a wireless section of the zoning. Master plan pushed off till next week and next month and gravel pit inspection. We got some feedback from one of the pits. And we're ready to schedule both kids for inspection. What happened with both those? You didn't tell us what happened to those to the uh, hearings. They both passed, or both passed. Yeah, both passed. Planning subdivision passed, <coughs> and Eversource uh, has the go ahead to trim the trees on the scenic roads, Oaks Mountain, Tumble Down, and I believe Lyford. Yes, Lyford uh, scenic section, the town part of Lyford Road. Zoning board. Um, Thursday, there is there are two applications being heard. Um, <clears throat> we have it scheduled on the, on the website in the newspaper for the hearings to begin at six o'clock here. Um, these, the members of the ZBA are going to want to go. They've asked that they can do a site inspection. Um, not nothing more. They want to visit, take a look at things. So they're going to meet at 5 o'clock here and go to the two individual sites um, and, and just take a look um, because they felt in the past it's been helpful to get an actual visual um, to see what's going on. So if someone wants to tag along for the site inspection, please feel free, but otherwise the hearings will be here at 6 o'clock um, and the members of the ZBA will go to the two locations to just take a look and get a just general sense of what they're going to be weighing in on. Um, Are the applications for those available to the public? It should be, yeah. yeah. Do, do you know where they would be? I didn't have them posted online. I at the meeting, I was going to have them all available. Um, and we posted in the newspaper what, what the applications were for. But if you want to copy the application, you have to definitely get your copies. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to look at it before okay. the, uh, the meeting. I thought that they're supposed to post them in a public place prior to the meeting so that the public can be informed as to what exactly is being applied for. Okay. If they were, then that, I, I take ownership of that. Um, without Frank running the show, I was doing my best to cover it, but yeah. it, they they're available, but I don't think we scan them on the website, right? I never asked you to, so. Okay. Um, is, so there you, a, is there a folder over there on that table? That's what I took I, a quick look. I, there was one, um, because I looked at it. The there other was day. one yeah. there for the planning board work. Oh, there's a planning board. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a folder with mm -hmm. No. All right, 
right, so long as short of it, I will ask Cassandra tomorrow to scan those and get them on the website. Okay. If, if you want them sooner, we can, I can, we can throw it. So if it's on the website, I can look at the website. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll show, if she could do it tomorrow morning, add them on, that'd be, that'd be great. Um, mm -hmm. So, additionally, we have a vacancy on ZBA, um, and we discussed with Ed Nason, who is no longer on any boards, um, if he'd be interested in taking up that role. He begrudgingly said he would take on his seat on the ZBA. Is that accurate? That is accurate. All right. Um, I can get you the paperwork. I can email you everything that we've got. Mm -hmm. for, the, for the hearing is Thursday. Um, and I'll have you just sworn in. I, I guess I can just do it that night. Um, we can do it tonight. We can do it yesterday. You got a paperwork, right? Yes, sir. All right. Um, There's only a motion to. So I'll make a so motion that we, that we appoint Ed Nason to the ZBA to fill the Ron Mauser, to Richard, Richard Mauser. Mauser term. Second. So. On favor? Aye. All right. All right. And so before you split, you can go ahead and yep. Rick has got the form and he can get you on. You want to take a time out? We'll do it. Do it. I'll wait. I can wait till the end. Okay. You're gonna be here? I will. I okay. Alright, we're not going anywhere now because we've got a road agent going up, so can you talk to us both? Want to speak them on that now? Yeah. Okay. Um, so those those uh, grids came in for the driveway up on Stone. Okay, and I'm hoping to do those Thursday. Um, and then uh, the beginning I couldn't get the sweeper until next week, so that which is okay. And then we'll finish up the Road, the ditching, cleaning the ditches, and from there we're going to go up to uh, class five to summer camps on Tunnel Down. Okay. And in the meantime, be sprinkling in some some winter sand and getting that mixed up and kind of filling up the shed. Uh, street signs, stop signs, and speed yeah, signs. Yeah, I'm supposed to go uh, around with somebody. No, I know not no, I know you guys in business past week and stuff like that, yep. so, so Rick, you want to get together with them and do it, or? Sure. Why not? What time are you going to do that? Not Thursday. <laughs> yeah, that's, I think, what you said the last time. <laughs> <laughs> that's not so many You want to do it first of the week? Yep. First of the week is better for me. Okay. <coughs> that's October. Should be, um... The 18th is next Monday. Yeah, there you go. October 18th. Yeah. What time? We'll have a community field. 8 o'clock? Yeah. When do you think you're going to be done with the ditching? Uh, I'm hoping it's just going to take two days. So by the time we get it, get the sweeper on Monday, uh, hopefully it'll be done by the end of the day on Tuesday. All goes well. In which road are you doing? The left? Uh, so we have the upper portion of Stoneham. We started up the hill. We got as far as um, um, Welch going up the last hill. So we got to go to the top and then we got to come down that side to the four corners, go out Garney Road, and that's it. Okay. But there's a lot. I, I've only done some town, some roads in town in the 15 years that I've been here, and that was on this end. So that, I, I've never done anything on that end, so there's a lot more material coming out. So that's why it doesn't sound like a lot, but I think I can do it in two days. All right, I want to get some plans working. Craig. Did whatever happened to Pleasant Valley Road, did it get repaired? Yes. Yeah, we, uh, I, I can't remember the exact day, but I had a private job out there and my equipment was out there. Great. And so when I was done that job, we went up there and we patched the, you know, we cleaned the culverts. And, and in the meantime, we actually had a, um, one of those rainstorms popped a culvert out of um, the turnaround. Really? Yeah, wow. well, it, it pulled it right out. I think what happened, from what it looked like had happened further up in the woods, some of the ruts, uh, the water came off from the dick road, rounded the corner, and didn't stay in the ditch, got out in the road, and then it started washing. 
and at that point it just popped the culvert out. So we'd fix that and then we'd edge the side of the road with coal patch and that big long section yeah. and did all that. Right. Yep. Excellent. All right. Rotation was good. Any other boards, committees we need to discuss? We're good. On to some old business. First item is health officer. That's on me. Um, I was supposed to speak with my neighbor, Ron Garney, see if he uh, was still interested, and I will make that happen before the next meeting. Uh, broadband packet. Yep. Handed out a packet two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, the last meeting, talking about all the legislation that has come through on broadband activity. And the question is, are we going to participate? The town authorized us to participate in the town meeting. So I would suggest that we put something on the website looking for a couple of volunteers. Yeah, I took, I took a look at it that, that night. I, I, it makes sense that we, we have our, our say in that and have at least some ears to the ground. Well, yeah, even though we have a couple of franchise agreements signed, yeah. This could be a, another competitor coming to town in the future. So, to your point, it would be good to have a say in what the bylaws look like. Yep. So, is that okay if we post something? Yep. You go there, right? Yep, good. Okay. Well, right, so I'll give you something. I'll give you a red. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, budget request deadline, October 26th. Have you been hearing a lot back from folks? Um, I've only gotten one budget okay. pack of information. So I think it's important that everybody know the date's coming up. I right, so fire off I know there's, there's still time to get stuff in, but it's around the corner. Yeah, fire off a reminder to everyone. It's typical. It's November, we're like, hey, it's 11 heard. <laughs> Instead of tracking people down. That or we just, we use, we default to sometimes they last year, or we, we do as we see fit, so. Planning board's ready to submit. Is that the one that you got? Or? Um, it is. Oh, yeah. Okay. The planning board's always one of the first ones. <laughs> Cemeteries do in there small. It's in the new year. Excellent. Yeah, so it'll like start trickling down. Yeah. There'll be certain offices that are slow. Thank <laughs> okay. One issue that Cassandra and the board is getting, we're getting email on town report. Who's going to do Remember last year? Maybe you don't, fellas. But the vendor that we used to have do our town report was bought out. <coughs> so we made a contract <coughs> to the person we always used. Lo and behold, someone else was doing the work in Nashua, not Concord anymore. And it was a challenge, let me put that way, to get that report here. So the question is, who do we want to use this year? And how are we going to find a vendor that will keep us happy and deliver on time. So that, we're looking at that. I mean, I don't know. We, we, we got a town report last year, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was a last minute thing. So now we're on that customer list, likely. So maybe we get more stable service from them. Maybe. If mm -hmm. we contact them and tell them we'll do it again. Are they cost effective? Or? Well, we, we, it was more expensive than typical, and you know the minimum number of copies is 250. Yeah. And we got boxes that we haven't used. We don't need 250. Right? We need 150. Um, it was a bad experience with that company. Let me tell you. Uh, so, so I, I, I'd advocate we ask around. What other towns in the area? Yeah, it's like like New Durham and uh, New Durham and Wakefield. What do they use? I'm just in smaller towns, with, yes. you know, like, like Freedom, New Durham, and Yeah, but Wolfboro's Wolf Wolf too big. Yeah, it seems like Wakefield and Wolfboro are not going to, you know, I don't know. I have asked Wakefield who they use, and I did get a contact, a, a direct if, contact if, if, at if, that. Yeah, if they're, their company's, you know. It might be worth it to try to get a price. Yeah, it's worth it trying to see if they want our, our small book of business. Yeah, that's a good point. We, we are not a large order, right? <clears throat> that's the issue. Is Blacksmith Printing still in business in Wolfsburg? The last I saw, but that's... Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, the they used still to do it years ago. And I think they got priced out by the other company we started to yeah. use. Because I think it was, it's been a while since we've been using them, but we did. 
So I guess that's a fallback, or again, we can check with the other towns. And well, let me just throw this out. What about something like Staples? I, mean, I think they would do it. I think you could do it. Doesn't look like a complicated print. No. Well, it is. What gets challenging is when you say no. It, they should be. They should be able to handle it. Right. You're right. We give them a PDF. We always get in trouble with what pages are different colors. But we want to specify that they should be able to run. Awesome. Cool. What do you got in stock? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get excited about the color. Just do it. <laughs> um, yeah, the yellow sheets for what the prior year's budget, right? The, 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 the current the, budget. And, and, and the warrants, so. Is that dictated by the state we have to do? I don't know. Uh, I've been coming with the balls up in here. I don't know. That's nah, honest. Put a tab in. We can put tabs in. I'm going to rip it all white, too. You know, but I, don't, I don't think this is a big joke. Yeah. That's, nah, that's what good. they want for a format. We'll, yes, still the state has a key to us. We'll give them a PDF, is what we're going to give them. Yeah, it's email to them. It's that's how we do it. We email the PDF. It's yeah. not that big. It's like 10 megabytes. All right, well. All right, so that's just happening. Fishing game info. The, you want to speak to that? Right? Well, yeah. The, the road agent got queried by fishing game. We want to do some work on Hanson Road. I, I would think it would be wise for us to get what they want to do in black and white, so we understand what they're going to what they're proposing, and then with that we can talk about whether we want to move forward. With it. I mean, you know, you can. If, if I understand, if I understood the person, they were describing the work just as when Ernie Brown in his Volunteers did it. They filled in the holes and just trimmed some of the growth back so people can get up and down and and without having to have forward drive vehicles. So it should be difficult for them to write that down. No. So that, that you know, if you go, they don't want to make it 50 feet wide, do they? Yeah, she said, just fill in some of the plot holes, catch some brush. I I I think that's we get just get it like what what they want to do. Yeah, they just email us. I don't care. Just some yeah. email, just outlining. Well, she never did call me back, so. Alright. Hey, does that have to specify what they're going to do or just give us a general description so we're not, yeah. you know, want to buy into a parking lot or something up there that's going yeah. to keep track? Lot, they want, I guess they want to get to a parking lot up there. Yeah, there is a yeah. parking area up there by the, by the billboard. It was, it, you know, I don't want to say no, but it just sounds like, you know, free work, you know, and they're going to make it better for us, but right. let's just make sure we're getting We'll buy what we want here. So we're not surprised, right? Right, right, right. It's because it's a simple email or a simple, yeah. you know. Yeah. Isn't there an issue about, I remember the discussion, I was a selectman when we did the, not when we did it, when there was, the Lakes region was raising hell with the town about people not being able to reach the parking area. And there was the whole issue of um, work being done on a class six, whether we did it or somebody else did it. No, no, it was, I guess it was. The funds, who's paying for it? Right. As long as the town doesn't do it, it's still class six. Okay. I answered my own question. Just had to think it through. Uh, Governor Wentworth Regional Donation. What's that about? Is that the Greater Wakefield. Um, oh, okay. I'm wondering if Governor Wentworth is there too. That's why I'm like, GWRC, I've never heard of it. Very similar, isn't it? <laughs> so we, we got a letter from the Greater Wakefield Resource Center. I think they're asking for money for next year. So we'll give it to the Deputy Treasurer for Mary Lou. But what's interesting in here is there. They're saying they do meals on wheels. Yes. Well, we pay Wolfboro for meals yeah, on wheels. Yeah. So we. So I mean, who who does meals on? So you got another letter for Wolfboro for meals on wheels. On meals. Yeah. A lot of. This is the Wolfboro area. Meals on wheels. So we'll, we'll have to talk about it. Sort that out at budget time. Well, so now. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But I think the Greater Wakefield Resource Center is in Union that building where people yeah, can go. Is. And get. You can go. Any any uh, elderly person can go there. Right. 
And I think it's three dollars you get a hot meal. Nice prepared hot meal. That's correct. But what they're asking for is a thousand dollars to support their Meals on Wheels program. And they're trying to edge in on Wolfboro. What whatever. So it's not a profit you gotta watch them. It's a cutthroat. It's free money. Have you gone down that to you in the I've been tempted to, but I'm afraid to show up. <laughs> so if you're, it doesn't matter where you're from, you can just go? That's right. Anybody. I, I know a couple people that go down regularly because it's a pretty nice meal. I'll, Fresh cooked. I'll go with you. You're not old enough. enough. Yes, I am. How old do you have to be? 65, I think. I have an idea. <laughs> I'll go if you'll go. Yeah. Eddie, you want to come too? I don't qualify yet. Okay. Why don't you guys take pictures for Be us? Be the driver. <laughs> take, take some pictures for us. Okay. So the young people can see what's okay, going we'll, on. We'll submit the chip for the six bucks for the town for our investigative services. Well, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> eat, eat, eat everything. National voting legislation. Oh. There's some. Some news went around, I'm not sure if everyone read it, but the essence of the national voting legislation, it correctly says, basically early voting that it's going to become for federal elections, early voting might become more mandated for the nation, which would mean you have your polling stations open several, if not ten days in advance, and they'd have to be staffed, you'd have to have the ability to take in voters. Um, can we back up a little? Yes, please. We got a flyer from the New Hampshire Municipal Association who's been trying to work these issues and they're saying this legislation looks like it's going to, it, it may go through. Mm -hmm. So they're suggesting that some of the some parts of it really would be catastrophic for the small towns because you'd have to staff your voting area for 10 to 12 to 14 days, 10 hours a day. They have to be open. And their point was, if that's going to impact you logistically or resource-wise, not necessarily dollar-wise, but, but we have volunteers doing it. Where are we going to get those people? They're suggesting that the, the municipalities and, and, and citizens in general write to our congressmen and senators saying the impact on the small communities is going to be significant. Because you'd be talking, you know, we'd have to two guys and checklist, they need two of them there. Technically, two board of are supposed to be there at all time. You'd have to have at least one person running both books that people are checking in. You'd have to have a moderator or an assistant moderator there, be whatever it's called. You'd have a lot of people there for a town of how many, think, 700 and some odd people. I mean, a typical election, we get two to three people vote at most. You know, it, 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 this might be great for larger cities, but it could be catastrophic for something like us. We just, we, we could not adhere to the law. Without bank, you know, without a massive budget increase, and all will it would be a massive waste of time because you might get early voting for a couple of people, a couple of days, and after that you get trickle votes. When we do mail-in ballots, it's you know that's that's our that's our early voting opportunity. So, so there was a whole host of issues. The one that hit us was staffing. Staffing the money. Yeah. The large cities, they point out, if you vote in a school, are you going to shut the school for two weeks? Well, that's not our issue, but other. Communities mm -hmm. having to deal with some other issues. So the suggestion we got from the municipal association is that we we, we write our, our our representatives and senators and say, hey, this, take a look at what it does to the small towns because it really it really hurts. So that's that's the gist of this item. Do we so do we want to write something on our letterhead? Is the question from the board of selectmen. I would agree to that. This this also mentions uh, opening polls after the election, doesn't it? It does. But the part that impacted this, I think, this town is staffing for for 14 days before the election, and it's not even a money issue. We can't get the people. Right. And, and even if we did have it open, who? How many people would you get voting? Right. That, that, I understand, but that's not our call. Right? No, no, no. I, I appreciate that, but uh, if, if there was a need for it. Then all right, we'd have to budget for it and deal with it accordingly. But there's not even a need for it here, you know. That's why they're asking for it. They want to point out to all the municipalities this is being talked about, and you, you might want to get ahead of it. Is what they're saying. 
you, you want to take a stab at 11 and send it to me and then we'll try to switch right, so I'll, I'll try to get to the thumb thing, but here we go. Polish it for us. And we'll put it on board of selectmen yeah. from the town of Brookfield. Yeah. We asked, <laughs> I, I sent a copy of the email to town clerk and their reaction was, wow, we can't do this because they have to be there mm -hmm. in two days, for 14 days. So I think they're going to launch a letter. <laughs> that would shut us down. Oh, wow. Which what? So, it's all right. I'll, I'll, I got it. I'll draft something. Mm -hmm. Again, a nice idea, but you know. Yeah, I like one more comment. <laughs> if, some, <laughs> if someone else would like to see this this letter or this article from the municipal municipal association association, drop the selectman an email, and we'll get you copies. Does the moderator know about this also? Uh, did you send him one? I did not send him one. I, 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 I'll call him a lot I mean, he, he's responsible for the whole election process. I mean, because he's the I'm sure he did some feelings no. about it. You may even know about him. He's, he's working up on concrete. Is this a, it's a federal? Only well, the federal elections. Oh. It hasn't passed yet, but... They yeah. came up with it all by themselves, too. Hey. I would suggest adding to the letter that it's also unconstitutional because the states are responsible for their voting, not the federal government. This is, so a, this is an anticipation of them passing this. It's unconstitutional, and it shouldn't pass. And the states would have to appropriate money because then it's a 28A issue, which is mm -hmm. it's not funded. It's an unfunded mandate. So I don't know how it's going to get through the state legislature. So there will be a fight. Well, so, the, it, the letter should state that it's unconstitutional and that you have no authority to do it. And what they're talking about is having effectively two elections. One following state rules for all state and local offices and a different election, if you will, for all federal offices. You would have to change the Constitution. Tell me what they're proposing. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. Firefighter Knox box for most buildings. Okay. We had an inspection of our schoolhouse mm -hmm. to make sure it was up to code, fire code, because we have a school over there and they asked to find colors. But, the fire department pointed out that if we had a, what they call a Knox box on the outside of that, any building that they had to get into, they wouldn't have to do damage to get in. We do have one here. We do have one here? Yeah. We put it in when uh, this building was built. It's right outside. Uh, you go out that door and turn left. The old generator. The With old the generator, generator room, the Knox box is there. I have all the paperwork on it. Uh, from when we bought it. But I, I, I've never noticed it, but that's okay. What's my smile is, I'm not sure the fire department knows it's there. Because they were going to tell them, they were the ones saying, you should have one in each building. <laughs> but there isn't one over there, is that what no. they're saying? In the there, house? There's not one over on that building. But they were saying, you should have I'm one. Gary right? Gary didn't put the, Gary put the one in here. That's interesting. Maybe hindsight just didn't want to think about that. The process is, they provide it, they install it, you bring right. them. You don't need one, it's like, I, that's what that box, I didn't know what that box was. All I public care. buildings nowadays have them. Oh, because I would be some people to weed wagon. Some houses even put them in. I never knew what it was, I used to go back to weed wagon, I didn't know what the table was, I just... <laughs> <laughs> I'll so, do we want to get one for the for the townhouse? This is about $300. We got money to the budget for that, for grounds, we still have money. <laughs> here's, here's what he says. If we have to go in, if we have to go in, you know we're going in. Right. So, how do you So they gotta go, wait, let me run around back to the lockbox. And they well, go out there, they said they put the lockbox just around the outside of the front door on the side. Well, if they have to go in. They're going in. The, the damage to whatever entrance they do is gonna be the least amount for them. I was just thinking that. The place is burning down. I'm okay that they keep the door. In. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, it, but does it just does it help for a prompt response? Can they get in quicker? But I think their issue uh, is if, if they suspect it's a false alarm and they have to get in, <clears throat> they'll use that vehicle. If the thing if there's yeah. smoke coming out, 
Don't worry about, that's about the locked box. Good point. All right, that's what that's making a lot of sense. Well, so if that's this one on this building, somehow that one got overlooked. I guess. I didn't know it was back here. <laughs> I don't know. Could you suggest to the fire department that, that to use if it's if it's a false alarm that they may be? I mean, these buildings are so close together. Could they just use the same box? Because if they come, you know, if the alarm goes off and they suspect that they don't see any flames or smoke, as easy as they could go to there, couldn't they just go to there? I mean, ask them, it'd be worth so, it. So what's in the box? Point. Keys, just, keys, it's, keys it's to like the door. Like master keys to get into the door. Yes. yes, and they have the key to get into the box, which is... Right, it's like a post office box. box yeah. key because this one is in proximity to that building, maybe we can just, just throw an extra key into this. Yeah, throw another key. We can lay them pretty easily in like townhouse and... Or we'll move this box to get get it someplace where it's convenient for both buildings. If it's hidden back here, no one knows about it. <laughs> All right. We'll talk about it. See what options we can. I, I need a reason to go talk about it. Both keys, keys yeah. to both buildings may be in that box. What yeah, box? Right? I don't even understand. Let's open it up and see. We take a time <laughs> cap so we don't open it up. Nah. We don't have a key to it. So we'll look at it. All right. I'll make a trip over it. Sounds like a fun field trip. <laughs> Good. All right. Um, something I didn't want to overlook, I, I, I don't want to classify as a new business, but I still don't want to mention it. Uh, long time resident Ron Fountain uh, passed away last night. Last night. Oh. So um, Ron has been a long time resident, big part of the town, um, all great guy from what I've to deal with him. So he loved this town and you will be missed, but we wanted to just mention that he did pass away and uh, his family should be in our first. Again, not new business, just something I wanted to bring up. So, um, <clears throat> anything else? Well, we got this letter from Wakefield uh, because we're butters to that town. They're they're trying to get cell tower coverage up in East Wakefield, so they have an application from a tower company to to uh, erect a tower, and they're just letting us know that. They're doing, if we have any issues, we're, we're invited to the public hearing on the 21st of October, uh, 2021. Sure. You might want to make note of the owner of the property on which that cell tower hopes to go because that same corporation owns property in Brookfield. Oh. Oh, yeah, it is. I see it here. Uh, from property owned by Savannah Wood. And that is, yes, they own a lot of property in town. Yes. Now, the tower that's going up is, just to give you a perspective on this, construct a monopo tower, 120 to 126 feet. And they're going to do the balloon thing so that... Um, actually, it was in the paper anyway, so they're doing, I forget the date, but so residents will be able to see. They put a balloon yeah, 126 yeah. feet up so people can see from where they are uh, how it's going to affect the landscape. Now, <coughs> I think we have a lot of pine trees in town that are 120 feet tall. I mean, 120 feet is not... I don't know. Well, a, a lot of our hot pine trees, 150, are the, are the uh, max. About that, but I would, they're 120. 100. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not going to dwarf most of the tree. You know, it'll, it'll be above the tree line for the most part, but not max. It's not going to be I don't know. like something down on New, in New Dorm or Alton there where you see it for miles around on top of the the blueberry fields. Right. Oh, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, I, yeah, they do 120 foot. Uh, I mean, the way they word it. Of a monopole tower, monopole. I see this tower a quarter of a mile high, with all these strings coming down. But this is 120 feet to 126. So, if you're interested, it's over in Wakefield. They do they have an address? Oh uh, yeah. Promise Lake Road. Pro yeah, on Promise Lake Road, up in yeah, Map 29, Lot 37. It's up. It's up in East Wakefield. That's all dead up there. Fifty-three. 
probably the one where Volts Lake is. I would imagine. Uh, and there's no name Babylon's, you know, to help us figure out where it is. Uh, their maps are on their website under assessment. There you go. One to look for. From the town hall, I'll give it to you. From the town hall, head <coughs> north on High Street to the end, slight left, go 153 north to Providence Lake Road. On Providence Lake Road, 0.7 miles, turn right and stay on 153 north. 3.8 miles, turn right on Perkins Hill. All right. Proceed a third of a mile down that road, Perkins Hill. I don't know where that is. So, Way up there. Uh, after you go past Seven Lakes Provision, you know where that is? The store, it's yellow, it used to be by, you know where I'm talking? So you go past that. And Burleyville, okay, you know where Burleyville is? So you yeah. go down the hill across the tracks? Yeah. The road that cuts from there just after that tracks. To Ivanhoe. Cuts across to Ivanhoe, that's Perkins Hill. Okay, well, it's going to be down that area. <laughs> that's what that's all about. <laughs> Rick, anything else? Oh. Hey. Can, can I bring up um, road agent stuff again? Yeah, please. Um, I was contacted today by a gentleman who says he has submitted a driveway application and you got it right there? Yep. Okay. I told him I would take care of it today. I went out and did the visit, talked to the gentleman and I just wanted him, he wants to start next week, so. Okay. Intend to cut? He didn't intend to cut here as well. He wants it all to go. But here's his proposed right away. Here's his intent to cut. Well, this came this came earlier this year. Remember, we we talked because they were going to log, and the question was, do I need a a, a driveway permit for logging? Yeah. And you well, said he's going to build. His intention is to build a house next year, so he wants to do the driveway this year and start to clear. Yeah, he's going to save tall trees for the, for the area of the, of the house and cut trees reviews. Cut trees review. I treat you. Oh boy, that's text. This is Stone Road. Stone. Stone Road. No, no, no. Cross from Tapper's Pasture. Tapper's Pasture. That way. By the driveway. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. there'll be one coming fairly soon, I think, for the uh, Churchill lot on my side of the road. The lot's going to be I think we're talking about the same lot. They got a septic approval. Yes, they did. Right. And it's going to be a very interesting driveway. The, the contour of the land doesn't contribute to anything. But it's going to be interesting in the winter. It'll be creative. Yeah. All right. Um, we'll read the bills in the record. Yeah. Bill from Governor Wentworth Regional School District for the October payment of $84,344. Um, <coughs> reimbursement for Cassandra for um, some postage um, for certified mail for ZBA. You should read how much it is. Oh, I'm sorry. $60.22. Uh, Carroll County invoice. Um, I'm not really sure exactly what this is. Um, it's, it's a monthly. It, it, it's a, we get bills from Cal County for uh, work we, if we print these or put okay. liens on. Okay. Okay. Our certificates, that's okay. Okay. Uh, So this is print. These are plans we've been printing, and uh, who's it from? For Diana, so these are all tax collector activities okay. for $18.58. Okay. Consolidated communications for $109.53, monthly bill. Um, mileage for Karen Sir. Yeah, for uh, $80.96 for traveling for the NHCTCA training in North Conway. Position for $75. Um, 
CAI Technologies for tax map, tax map maintenance for $200. Supportably payment. Positively Creative Solutions for Technology Consulting Services for $45. That one we went on Facebook about. You talk to them. We have X number of email addresses that the town is allowed. And we're being billed for an additional email address for the deputy treasurer. That's what this is about. $45. A mileage for Rosacker for travel to Conway and return for the tax collector's meeting. For thirty-six dollars. Yeah. Uh, yes. Sixty-eight dollars and eighty cents. Osby aggregates for two hundred forty-three dollars and ten cents. Salmon press for advertising. Planning board one hundred and fifty. Supervisors of the checklist ninety and planning board one hundred and fifty. I have a motion that we accept the bills of the record. Second. All favor? Uh, All right. Okay. All right, we're going to initial bills and sign the paychecks, so call meeting adjourned. Seven forty-two.